Okay, they want us to find, to use the intermediate value theorem to show that there is a number that is exactly one less than its fourth power. Okay. So that number we're going to call x, and it equals exactly one less than its fourth power. So there's your, there's your equation. You're trying to basically show that there is a value that makes that equation true. Now, you know that if you set that equal to zero by moving it over, you know that that's a polynomial function. So it's continuous. So you can state that. You want to state that. And you know it's probably doing something like this. It's not going to look exactly like that. But you want to find some interval. You want to find some interval to where you can see that one of the values, let me, let me say that it looks like this. You want to find some interval, right, let's say right from here to here, so that one of the values you can show is po positive and another value is negative. Because the intermediate value theorem then says that it has to, there has to be every function value between those, the positive and the negative, have to be achieved, which means there has to be some value, and we're going to call that C, some value C, or some sorry, x value c, where f of c would be equal to zero. That's essentially what we're trying to show, and the intermediate value theorem helps us do that. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to find an interval. Now, you can punch that in your calculator. If they let you use the calculator, you can, fi you can literally find the interval, or you can just plug in values until you find some where one's a positive and one's a negative. So let's start. I'm just going to randomly plug in. Let's start with zero and one. 0, f of 0 so, so there's no like, is a negative 1. So there's no like way of, other way of going about this other than just like guessing? Is there another way of going about this? Yeah, plugging it into your calculator. Okay. That's and looking at the graph and kind of just seeing it. Okay. Otherwise, you just kind of guess, and eventually, hopefully, you'll run into it. Now, if you don't run into one, then you might wonder, is there really one? And you may be, guess, you may be plugging in things forever, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So no... This is, this is just kind of a rudimentary way of doing it. Okay. So if I try f of, f of 0 is, one, uh, is negative 1, and f of 1 is also negative 1, right? So that doesn't work. Let's try another one. How about negative 1 and positive 1? What's f of negative 1? I hope it's positive. And when I plug in negative 1 into here, I get positive 1 minus a negative 1, which is plus plus 1 minus a 1. Ooh, hey, good news. That's a positive value, whereas f of positive 1, as we already showed, is a negative value. So there we go. There's our interval. So now the question is, so, so in other words, what that means is, well, I didn't quite draw this picture right because what I found is, let me draw the picture here so you can see it a little bit better. Here's, here's f of negative 1. Here's negative 1 right here. f of negative 1 is a positive, is positive 1, whereas f of positive 1 is negative 1. So I know somewhere in between here, it's got to cross. It's got to cross the x-axis, which means there's a value right there. We're going to call that x value c, where f of c equals 0. And since that's true, since f of c equals 0, we know that this equation right here has a solution. And if that equation has a solution, then this equation has a solution too, because they're the same equation. So we're going to state that, and we're going to be carefully use the intermediate value theorem to state that, and here's how that will look. So since, since that function is continuous, and we're, we're giving our little, our reasoning in parentheses there because it's a polynomial, on the interval from negative 1 to 1, and since f of negative 1 is positive while f of positive 1 is negative, the intermediate value theorem ensures that there is some c, some value of c, such that f of c equals 0. Therefore, c equals c to the fourth minus 1, which means c is equal to 1 less than um, 
that number to its fourth power. And that's how we would write it.